This is section 4.7, Operations on Mixed Numbers. First we're going to look at graphing fractions, mixed numbers, and integers on a number line. And to do that, remember that a mixed number is the sum of a whole number and a proper fraction. 3 and 4 fifths is the same as 3 plus 4 fifths. So if we want to graph this, we can think of the whole number part, the 3, and we can go to 3 on our number line, and then we can go from there and graph the 4 fifths, the fractional part. So if we're here at 3, we just have to go over another 4 fifths. There's where the 3 and 4 fifths is. Another way to think about this is that we could write 3 and 4 fifths as an improper fraction. That would be 19 fifths. And if we count over from 0 and we count how many fifths we have. Here we'd have 5, 10, 15, and another 4 would be 19. So we could also think about graphing it that way. So let's take this whole list of numbers and graph them on a number line. Let's put 0 in the middle, and our first integer to graph is negative 3. Since it's negative, that means that we're going to the left. So here's negative 1, negative 2, and negative 3. There's negative 3. Now the next one in our list is negative 3 and a half. Since we've already gone over this far to get to negative 3, then to graph the rest of it, so if we're thinking of negative 3 and 1 half, as negative 3 plus a negative 1 half. That means we've already gone over to the negative 3, now we have to go over another half. So between negative 3 and negative 4, if we divide this into two equal parts, then this part right here from, three, from negative 3 over to this part would be another negative 1 half. So this would be our negative 3 and 1 half. All right, now let's look at the next number in the list, which was negative 1. That's right there. Now the last two in our list are positive numbers. The first one is 3 fourths. So let's graph 1 here. Then remember to graph 3 fourths, we need to divide the distance between 0 and 1 up into four equal parts. Each one of those is 1 fourth, so we're going to start from 0 and count to the right three of those parts, and that gives us 3 fourths. And last of all, 2. 2 is just a whole number, so we can go over here and graph the 2. So now we have all five of the numbers in our list graphed. Now another thing we can do with mixed numbers or whole numbers is to multiply or divide them. And in order to do that, we need to first write our mixed number as an improper fraction. Here's an example. If we want to multiply these two mixed numbers together, 3 and 1 fifth times 2 and 1 fourth, we can't multiply these the way they're written. We need to write them as improper fractions first. So we're going to take each one of these and change it to an improper fraction. 3 and 1 fifth, and remember to do this, we multiply the whole number times the denominator of the fractional part. That would give us 15, and then we add the numerator. That's how they got the 16. So this is actually 3 times 5 plus 1 is how they got the 16 here. Then we have the same denominator as we had for our fractional part. So 3 and 1 fifth is the same as 16 fifths. Then for the 9 fourths, again, the 9 is actually 2 times 4 plus 1, since we took these two multiplied together and then added the 1. Now we just have the multiplication of two fractions. And again, we can look for common factors that could be canceled out. If we factor 16 into 4 times 4, then we notice that we can cancel out these two 4s that are in common. Then all we have left on the top is 4 times 9, which is 36, and a 5 on the bottom. And now we have this written as an improper fraction. If we wanted to write it again as a mixed number, then it would be 7 and 1 fifth. Let's look at some examples. In this first one, we have 2 and 2 thirds times 1 half. So our first step is to write 
2 and 2 thirds as an improper fraction. So to do that, we'd have 2 times 3, and then we would add our numerator. So 2 times 3 plus 2. Well, 2 times 3 is 6, plus 2 is 8. So 2 and 2 thirds would be 8 thirds. Now we can write this as a regular multiplication. And notice that if we factor our 8, then we can cancel out a 2 with the bottom. And this ends up being 4 thirds. Now if we want to write this as a mixed number, remember that when we do that, we actually divide the numerator by the denominator. If we divide that, that would give us 1 with a remainder of 1. And that means that our mixed number we take our whole number from our quotient, and then our remainder gives us the numerator for our fractional part. Our denominator is the same as what it was in this part. So that's 1 and 1 third. Now let's look at 4 and 4 fifths divided by 1 fifth. So for our 4 and 4 fifths, we want to write that as an improper fraction first. So we would take the 4 times the 5, and then we would add the numerator of 4. So this would give us 24. So we have 24 fifths divided by 1 fifth. And remember now, if we're dividing by a fraction, we're going to change that to a multiplication. When we do that, we have to flip over our second fraction. So we would make that 5 over 1. And notice here that we already have factors that we can cancel. We have a 5 in our numerator there and our denominator here. And remember, you can do that as long as this is a multiplication. You can't do that if it's an addition or a subtraction or a division. But if you have your two fractions multiplied, then you can cancel numerators and denominators from one to the other. So that leaves us with 24 on the top and a 1 on the bottom. And that would just be the same as 24. And finally, we have 3 and 1 third divided by 2 and 3 fifths. So for this one, to write it as an improper fraction, we would have 3 times 3 plus our numerator of 1, which would be 9 plus 1 is 10. So that would give us 10 thirds for our first fraction. And for the 2 and 3 fifths, we'd have 2 times 5 plus 3 which is 10 plus 3, so that's 13. So 2 and 3 fifths would be the same as 13 fifths. Now again, since this is a division, we're going to rewrite it as a multiplication, which means we flip over our second fraction. And if we look at our factors on the top and the bottom, 3 and 13 are both prime numbers. So they're not going to have any factors in common with the 10 or the 5. That means that we can just go ahead and multiply, and we will have our fraction in simplest form. And 3 times 13 is 39. So that gives us 50 over 39. And that's an improper fraction. If we wanted to write it as a mixed number, then if we divide 50 by 39, we get 1 with a remainder of 11. So this becomes our whole number part. The remainder becomes the numerator of our fractional part. And our denominator is the same as it was up here. So our denominator would be 39. So we could write this as 50 39ths or as 1 and 11 39ths. Now, if we're adding or subtracting mixed numbers, we can do this two different ways. We can convert each mixed number to an improper fraction and then do the addition or subtraction. But another way we can do it is go ahead and add the whole, add or subtract the whole number parts and 
then deal with the proper fraction parts. So we can write this in a vertical form. Now the first thing we would want to do is find the LCD of our two fractional parts. Since we have 14 and 7 as our two denominators, the LCD would be 14. And we would want to write equivalent fractions that would have an LCD of 14. 2 and 5 14 already has that as its denominator, but for the 5 and 6 7 to get 14, we'd have to multiply the 7 times 2. It means we would multiply on the top by 2, and that would give us 12 14 So now we have our fractional parts written so that they have a common denominator. And now we're writing this in a vertical form, and we can go ahead and add the whole number parts and add the fractional parts. If we add 5 14 and 12 14 that gives us 17 14 and if we add the 2 and the 5, we get 7. Now we're not quite done with this because notice that 17 14 is an improper fraction. We're going to have to rewrite that as a mixed number in order to put this in a standard form. So we would write that as 1 and 3 14 instead of 17 14 And then to get our final answer, we would take our 7, our whole number part of this, and add the mixed number part, the 1 and 3 14 We add the whole numbers to get 8, and then our fractional part is 3 14 So in the end, we want to make sure that our fractional part of our mixed number is a proper fraction. Let's do a couple of examples. If we have 10 and a half plus 7 and 1 9th, let's start out by finding our LCD of our fractional parts. We have 2 here, and 9 is 3 times 3. So our LCD is just going to be 2 times 9, or 18. So for our 10 and a half, we want to write the fractional part of this with a denominator of 18. We'd have to multiply numerator and denominator by 9. So that would give us 10 and 9 18 For the 7 and 1 9th, to get 18, we want to multiply the numerator and denominator by 2. So that gives us 7 and 2 18 Now we're adding 10 and 9 18 to 7 and 2 18 And if we line it up this way with our whole numbers and our fractions, then this works a lot like just adding whole numbers if we keep everything lined up. If we're adding 9 18 and 2 18 Remember, we're just adding the numerators of those. So our numerator is going to be 9 plus 2. Our denominator is going to be 18. So that gives us 11 18 That's our fractional part. Then for our whole number part, we're just adding 10 and 7. And we get 17 for that. So we have 17 and 11 18 And since this is a proper fraction and we would want to make sure it's in simplest form, since 11 is prime, it's in simplest form. So that means we're done. Our answer is 17 and 11 18 Let's do one more. Now we have 8 and 1 3rd plus 2 and 2 thirds plus 3 and 2 9 Again, our three fractional parts don't have the same denominators, so we need to get a common denominator. Since 9 factors into 3 times 3, that means our LCD is going to be 3 times 3, which is 9. So we'll take each one of our numbers and rewrite it so that it has a denominator of 9 in the fractional part. To get 9 here, we'd have to multiply top and bottom by 3. So we have 8 and 3 ninths for the first one. For the 2 and 2 thirds, to get a 9 here, we have to multiply by 3 again. So that gives us 2 and 6 ninths. And for the 3 and 2 ninths, it already has the denominator we want, so we don't have to change anything. So now we have 8 and 3 ninths. We're going to write this in a vertical form again. Our 2 and 2 thirds is now 2 and 6 ninths, and we have the 3 and 2 ninths. Now since we have like fractions, we can just think about adding our numerators for our fractional parts. So we have 3 plus 6 plus 2 in the numerator here and 9 in the denominator. 3 plus 6 plus 2 would be 11. 
Our fractional part of that is 11 ninths. Then for our whole numbers, we have 8 plus 2 is 10, plus 3 is 13. If we get 13 and 11 ninths, this is an improper fraction, since the 11 is bigger than the 9. That means that we need to write it as a mixed number. So 11 ninths, we would divide the 11 by the 9 and get 1 with a remainder of 2. Mixed number there, we're going to have 1 and 2 ninths. Now we can just add our whole number parts and that gives us 14 and 2 ninths for a final answer. We can also subtract with mixed numbers. Sometimes when we do this, we actually have to borrow when we're subtracting the fractional parts. So here's an example of what we could do if we needed to borrow. If we have the fraction 3 and 1 third, we could rewrite it a different way. We could write it with 2 as the whole number part, and then we would have a number bigger than 1 for our fractional part. So we could write it as an improper fraction in the fractional part. So basically what we're doing here is we're borrowing 1 from the 3 so that we have a 2 there. We're putting the 1 over here and then we're going to write this part as an improper fraction. That would give us 2 and 4 thirds. This is the same number, notice, as 3 and 1 third. It's just written in a different form. Let's see how we would do that with this example. We have 5 and 3 fourteenths minus 3 and 6 sevenths. Again, we need to get an LCD for our fractional parts. Our LCD for this would be 14, since 14 is 2 times 7. So now we're going to write our numbers with equivalent fractions that have an LCD of 14. That gives us 5 and 3 fourteenths. And for our second number, we have 3 and 12 fourteenths. Now here's where we have to borrow, because if we're trying to subtract 12 fourteenths from 3 fourteenths, well, 12 fourteenths is actually larger than 3 fourteenths. So now we're going to borrow from the 5, so we're going to make that a 4, and then we're going to put the extra 1 over here with the 3 fourteenths, and then we'll write that as an improper fraction. So again, we're multiplying 1 times 14, adding 3, so that's going to give us 17 fourteenths. Okay, so now if we rewrite our problem, we have 4 and 17 fourteenths minus 3 and 12 fourteenths. Now we can subtract the 17 fourteenths and the 12 fourteenths. So 17 fourteenths minus 12 fourteenths would give us 5 fourteenths, and then 4 minus 3 would give us 1. And we're done here because our 5 fourteenths is a proper fraction. Here are some examples. In this one, we already have a common denominator between our fractional parts. So let's write this out in our vertical form. We have 15 and 8 ninths minus 6 and 2 ninths. And remember, now we're subtracting. So if we have 8 ninths minus 2 ninths, that's the same as 8 minus 2 over 9. So that would give us 6 ninths. And then 15 minus 6 would give us 9. So this one we didn't have to do any borrowing. But do notice here that our fractional part is not in simplest form. Since 6 and 9 both have a factor of 3, We can cancel that 3 out, and that gives us 9 and 2 thirds. So this would be in simplest form. All right, here's another one. If we have 17 and 1 sixth minus 5 and 13 20 fourths, in this case we have unlike fractions. So we need to find an LCD. 6 is 2 times 3. 24 is 3 times 8. So we get 3 times 2 times 2 times 2. That means for our LCD, for the 2, we had 3 factors of 2 here, so we need to have all 3 of those. Oops. And then our 3 only occurred once in each place, so that it just gets written down once. And that gives us 8 times 3, which is 24. It means our LCD is 24. 
So we're going to have to change this first fraction so that it has a denominator of 24. To get 24 here, we'd need to multiply by 4. So that gives us 17 and 4 24 ths. Okay, so let's write our subtraction problem. So we have 17 and 4 24 ths minus 5 and 13 24 ths. Here again, we're going to have to borrow because our 13 is bigger than our 4. So we're going to take our 17 and 4 24 ths. We're going to borrow from the 17. So we're going to make that a 16. And we put the 1 over here with the fractional part. Then we're going to rewrite this as an improper fraction. So we have 1 times 24 plus 4 would give us 28. So instead of 17 and 4 24 ths, now we have 16 and 28 24 ths. Now we can do the subtraction because 28 is bigger than 13. So 28 24 ths minus 13 24 ths would give us 15 24 ths. And 16 minus 5 would give us 11. And if you look at our 15 24 ths, that's not in simplest form because those both have a 3 as a factor. So 15 is 3 times 5, 24 is 3 times 8 means we can cancel out a 3, and that gives us 11 and 5 eighths as our final answer. Okay, our last example is to take 3 minus 6 and 5 ninths. And there are a couple things to notice here. One is that 3 is a whole number, and also notice that since 6 is bigger than 3, then we're actually going to end up with a negative answer. So we could think about this as rewriting this as an addition. So this would be the same as 3 plus the opposite of 6 and 5 ninths. Now if you remember how we did that, if we were adding integers that had different signs, we looked at the absolute values of each one. So our absolute values would be 3 here and 6 and 5 ninths here. Then what we did with this was we took the larger absolute value and subtracted the smaller one. That would give us 6 and 5, minus, 5 ninths minus 3, and if we do that this way, well here we just end up with 5 ninths, and then here 6 minus 3 is 3. So this is 3 and 5 ninths. We have to take the sign of the larger, whatever the larger one was, and that was negative. So this is, in the end, is going to give us a negative 3 and 5 ninths. Our final answer for this one is going to be negative 3 and 5 ninths. Now here's a word problem that involves mixed numbers. In this one, John cuts a board that's 6 and 5 ninths feet long from one that's 20 feet long. We want to know how much he's got left, or how long is the remaining piece. What we're really doing here is we're taking 20 and subtracting 6 and 5 ninths. Now in this one, since we have a whole number and a mixed number, we're actually going to have to start out by borrowing with the 20 in order to do this subtraction. So the 20 we're going to write as 19 plus 1, and then the 1 here we're going to write as an improper fraction that has the same denominator as we have in our other fraction. Well, 1, if we wanted to write that with a denominator of 9, we would just write that as 9 ninths. So this is the same as 19 and 9 ninths minus 6 and 5 ninths. If we write this out vertically, it's going to look like this. Now we can take 9 ninths minus 5 ninths, and that will give us 4 ninths and 19 minus 6 gives us 13. Our 4 ninths is a proper fraction and it's also in simplest form, so this is the answer. That tells us that the remaining piece
is 13 and 4 ninths feet. Now let's do some other operations with mixed numbers. Notice that these ones also have negative signs mixed in, so we have to deal with the negatives too. In this one, since we have a division, then we want to write our mixed numbers as improper fractions. So in this one we'd have 5 times 8 plus our numerator up there, 7. And again we have our negative here. This would give us 47 eighths. And then for this one, we'd have 5 times 4 plus 1, which would give us 21. We'll have this divided by 21 fourths. Now we can take our division and rewrite it as a multiplication. It gives us negative 47 eighths times 4 21sts. 8 is 2 times 4. That means that we can already go ahead and cancel out the 4. We don't even have to write out the prime factorization. And 47 is a prime number, so there's not going to be anything in common with 2 or the 21 down here. So we have just negative 47 on the top, and then 2 times 21 is 42. Now this is an improper fraction the way it's written. If we wanted to write it as a mixed number, then we take well, we take our 47 and divide by 42, which would give us 1 with the remainder of 5. So we could rewrite this as negative 1 and 5 40 seconds. Now let's look at this one. Here we have a multiplication, and notice that we have two negative signs, which means our product will be positive. So we know that already. Now we need to rewrite our mixed numbers as improper fractions. 8 times 3 is 24 plus 1 would be, give us 25, and for this one we'd have 1 times 5 is 5, plus 1 is 6. That gives us 25 thirds times 6 fifths. And it's important to notice what operation we're doing. Notice that in these three, since we have multiplication and division, we don't have to worry about getting common den denominators. That's only if we're doing addition and subtraction. Okay, now let's look at our multiplication, and let's write our factorizations. So on the top we have 25, which is 5 times 5, and 6, which is 2 times 3. On the bottom we just have 3 times 5. So we can cancel a 5 from the top and the bottom, and we can cancel a 3. And that gives us 10 on the top. And we canceled everything on the bottom, so we have a 1 there. And we can just write that as the whole number 10. Okay, one more. This time we have a division, we have two different signs, we have a negative and a positive, which means our final answer is going to be negative. And we need to rewrite our mixed number as an improper fraction. So we'd have 5 times 8 plus 5, which would be 45. So here we have negative 9 divided by 45 eighths. Now we're going to take this and rewrite it as a multiplication since we're dividing by a fraction, so we change that to multiplication and flip over our second fraction. Now we have negative 9 times 8 over 45. And remember that if we have a whole number or an integer like this, we can rewrite it to look like a fraction just by writing our number over 1. So we could rewrite this as negative 9 over 1 times 8 over 45. And if we write these together, on the bottom we'd have 1 times 5 times 9, and that means we can go ahead and cancel a 9 out. Now all we have left is on the top an 8, and on the bottom a 5. And this is in simplest form already, so we don't have to reduce it. Do notice, though, that it's an improper fraction. We could write it this way, or we could write it as a mixed number. It will still be negative. If we divide 8 by 5, we get 1 with a remainder of 3. So that would make this negative 1 and 3 fifths.